scientists have just uncovered a long lost piece of astronomy history in an old manuscript that reveals the work of an old master, helps us to understand the evolution of star charts and makes us all wonder what else might we find using modern imaging techniques. This is amazing. If you're an astronomer, you've probably not heard of the Codex Climachi Rescriptus. If you're a theologian, you've probably not heard of Hipparchus. If you're neither an astronomer nor a theologian, you've possibly not heard of either. And that makes this whole event all the more fascinating. So, before the advent of paper in the 1500s, important texts were written on parchment made from fine animal skin. And during the Middle Ages, a time broadly taken as 500 to 1500 AD, they reused these parchments by scraping off the old ink and writing newer, more important words on them. These recycled parchments are called palimpsests, and everything newly written in the Middle Ages would have been religious texts. Apart from hunting for entertainment if you were rich, or struggling to stay alive if you were poor, there wasn't really anything else in the world except taxes and religion in those days. And for that reason, parties were terrible. So as you can imagine, historians, scientists and theologians have always wanted to know what was on those old parchments before the last texts were written over the top of them. And you can't just hit Control z on parchments. Christian theologians hoped to find the earliest written biblical texts rather than having just the later revisions, whereas scientists hoped to find what knowledge was erased to make way for those biblical texts. And behind one of those religious texts, known as the Codex Climachi Rescriptus, we've just discovered what is likely to be part of the works of the father of astronomy around 150 BC. Hipparchus was the first to calculate the sizes of and distances to the moon and sun, but best known perhaps for one of the first catalogues of the night sky. Now sadly his star charts have never been found and they're only known about because of references to them by later authors. And this discovery not only reveals that the works of Hipparchus were real, but also confirms how accurate they were, confirming that the later references to Hipparchus's star charts were real and not just overblowing a myth of some ancient astronomer. This is really comforting for astronomers and historians, as you can imagine. And lucky too, because the myth of Hipparchus was so strong that the European Space Agency launched the world's most accurate star mapping satellite in 1989 and called it Hipparchus as a witty and convoluted acronym giving a giant doffing of the cap to Hipparchus himself. That would have been embarrassing if Hipparchus' star mapping was just a myth. So how do you peel back the latest ink to reveal the older inks underneath? Well the latest technique in what forensic examiners call non-destructive investigation uses multi-spectral analysis to look through the top inks without damaging them. And rather than shining a single light source on the palimpsests like daylight or artificial room light as you'd normally use when studying documents, scientists use a number of different light sources at different wavelengths that enhance the visibility of the chemicals in the older inks. And this can be trial and error until you get the best wavelengths of light for minimizing the newer inks while maximizing the visibility of the older inks in the manuscript. Sometimes combining wavelengths to get the best contrast. Now the text found underneath the Codex Climachi Rescriptus wouldn't have been written by Hipparchus's own fair hand. It would have been a 5th or 6th century copy of his work, but crucially, unlike religious texts which tended to put the new writer's spin on things, it would have been a direct copy. And we can see it describes the constellation Corona Borealis with information on its size in the sky and the coordinates of four of its stars. 
the coordinates of those four stars match the positions they would have been in during the time Hipparchus was mapping the skies around 150 BC. And they have an accuracy greater than Ptolemy's, which was considered the most accurate at the time the text was copied in the 5th or 6th century. The only astronomer known to map the stars around that time was Hipparchus, and the accuracy means it was a copy of Hipparchus's work, or there was another ancient Greek astronomer of the time that was just as prolific and accurate, for whom there is no historic record. So it was Hipparchus. And this relatively new technique to reveal erased text has been used by numerous archives and archaeologists for the last 10 years, especially in theology where various scrolls and codex have been examined to reveal earlier religious texts underneath. In fact, as a technique, it's actually starting to get a bit dated now, but artificial intelligence is going to give it a new lease of life. Machine learning allows lessons learned on earlier examined palimpsests to be automated, making it quicker and more easy to apply the same light and contrast settings on other palimpsests. This will take a lot of the manual work out and improve the resolution. With this comes faster analysis, and there's no shortage of palimpsests to examine. Each may have numerous layers of ink, and therefore numerous hidden texts to be discovered. And from this new text, we're learning more about the history of the ancient astronomers and the evolution of star catalogues. This text showing Hipparchus using the equatorial coordinates while Ptolemy later used the ecliptic coordinates means that contrary to expectation, Ptolemy didn't just base his catalogue only on Hipparchus's data but used his own data. But it also confirms that Hipparchus was indeed more accurate than Ptolemy who came 300 years later, meaning Hipparchus's maps were more accurate than anyone before him or anyone after him for the next 1,500 years until the Persians really began to excel in star mapping in the 1400s. And if you liked this show, take a look at these because you're going to absolutely love them. If you're an astronomer, you've probably not heard of the Codex Clim...